The, the global space industry, you know, in 2022 was worth between 400 to 500 billion US dollars, uh, of which launch vehicles, uh, frequently referred to as rockets, comprise of less than 5%. But it's so visual, right? The launch of a rocket going into space, uh, and many people tend to mistake that that is a large part of the space industry. But it really isn't. It is a very difficult and challenging business to be in. When we have uh, partners and you know researchers or even students with ideas to launch experiments into space, uh, we do facilitate that. The huge value in space is in the data and the capabilities that it provides. You know, allowing us to navigate, allowing us to get effectively from uh, point A to point B, uh, providing business insights, you know, and providing information on, you know, how the planet is doing, uh, who's emitting uh, harmful gases. These are the large part of space that provides, you know, technologies and solutions that help us live better and help us live more sustainably here on Earth. In the past, you would probably build a really huge satellite that could be four ton, five ton. Uh, you know, government uh, leads the mission, they run it. Uh, because of the way technology has progressed, uh, we're getting very good technology in very small pieces. So that led to the democratization of space. The chips, the parts are becoming cheaper and more people can now build their own satellite. And it could be even as small as a tissue box weighing three kilograms, two kilograms. And we could put scientific payload inside and launch it into space. Now in this case, uh, it would probably take two years to build this tissue box satellite. And that's been quite optimistic. And then another 18 months to plan for the launch of it, you know, assuming it gets into orbit. So the whole mission can be two to three to four years. It's not, not easy. Uh, then when we go back to the huge four, five ton satellites we're talking about, that could be you know, easily at least four years to, to build and to launch it successfully into orbit. You know, we wanted to send chili padi, right? Because the red would symbolize Singapore. But there were certain restrictions, so we settled on coriander seeds, uh, you know, because that's our favorite chicken rice garnish. And the seeds uh, were in space for two to three months. When we brought them back on Earth, uh, you know, we, we grew them with our partners uh, and we did an analysis on the uh, seeds and the vegetables that grew out of the seeds. And we found uh, discernible differences. So the seeds that went to space were more voluminous and uh, they had you know, different pathways uh, within the seeds and the, the plant that was changed. Uh, and I think that's very exciting for, for us to find out what other types of different crops can we get from space experiments that could provide healthier vegetables, healthier food for us here on Earth. At space faculty, we encourage experimentation, learning and leadership in space. Failure is not a dirty word in space. It's part of the learning process. You, you have to fail because we are pushing the frontier you know, of where technology can bring us. We are pushing the limits of where we can go. And failure is to be expected. In fact, I think people get a bit more worried when things go too well, you know, that maybe then something is really going wrong. So I, I, I like the spirit of the space industry where we embrace failure. We see that as an important part of the learning journey. And I wish you know, more people could have that mindset when it comes to developing new capabilities to see failure as an important part of that process. Singapore has a very strong foundation to develop itself as a space hub in Asia. It is where East meets West. It is where people feel you know, their IP, their intellectual property will be protected. It's relatively easy to get financing. Uh, here we have a very reputable uh, financing infrastructure. And these are you know, important to do business and certainly in the space business. Where Singapore can also uh, you know, enhance its position as a space hub is in the talent development. I think young people, uh, industry professionals feel safe and welcome here in Singapore. And you know, being able to attract talent and to provide training programs to get the best minds into Singapore will certainly enhance our position as a space hub. When I was young, I played with cardboard boxes and I sat in them 
and I imagined that to be my spaceship. I travelled to space, I explored new planets, I was among the stars. And I, I kept these, uh, this dream with me. When I grew up, I studied in the US and that was where I saw firsthand the effect you know, of space programs and missions in inspiring learning, in inspiring curiosity, in inspiring us to be creative and innovative, and inspiring the interest in math, you know, science and engineering that I love. So when I came back to, to Asia, I realized that was missing, that pathway to space was missing. So I made it my business to create that pathway. So I, I do get uh, young people, you know, young students, children asking me uh, what they need to do uh, to be in the space industry and what's it, what it's like. And I always tell them, uh, be limitless in your imagination. You know, you are there to write your story, uh, there to discover new things, and you know, you never know where it can take you. And I think that's the beautiful part of being in the space industry.